I'm going to be spending 100 hours playing Pokemon Scarlet doing nothing but shiny hunting. My goal, collect the most interesting and desirable shinies in the game. I wanted to start with something simple, so I decided I was going to shiny hunt the three starters using the Masuda method with a shiny charm for a 1 in 512 chance per egg. I figured hatching all three starters at the same time would be more fun, so I booted up my picnic with the ditto on my party, made a level 2 egg sandwich, and spent 30 minutes collecting eggs. After, I'd start hatching by walking up and down Alfernada Town. Now, the problem with the Masuda method was I could only manage to hatch about 50 eggs an hour, and with time being my most valuable resource, I didn't want to waste an estimated 30 hours for only three shinies. I figured the best solution was to try a different hunt while hatching eggs, the classic full odds shiny. Well, full odds with the shiny charm. Even if this was another really inefficient method, I wanted at least one of my shinies in the 100 hours to be unaffected by anything but the shiny charm. It also make for a fun experiment. Would I hatch a shiny first or get a random encounter? After eight and a half hours of running around, my question would finally be answered. <laughs> There's the random shiny encounter. I knew it was bound to happen. It's such a stupid shiny. Who's who's gonna use a pseudo wudo? All right, well, we got a shiny. That's cool. Definitely one of the worst shinies. Now, I won't lie to you. I was disappointed in the moment to have my very first shiny be a puke green pseudo wudo. But hey, a shiny's a shiny. I'd finish up the rest of my egg batch, landing at 370 eggs hatched. While clearing out the excess of starters in my boxes, I realized there were a total of eight eggs that I had just completely missed and forgot to hatch. Yeah, there's like no way one of these will be it, but it could. Oh, what? <laughs> You're kidding me! This left two starters to go, and since I had already gotten my full on shiny, it was time to start mixing the egg hatching with the isolated encounter shiny hunting method. This is when you make a sandwich that has sparkling power three and encounter power three for a specific type, forcing certain areas of Paldea to only spawn one or two Pokemon. I personally wanted a shiny toad school, so while hatching eggs, I'd run circles around the top corner of the map checking for shinies. Oh my gosh! There's a <laughs> There's a Fukoko! There he is, the boy! Only 484 eggs in, I already had two of the shiny starters. This was incredibly lucky because combining overworld shiny hunting with egg hatching had slowed me down to around 44 eggs an hour. With the luck I was getting, an estimated 35 hour hunt to get all three shiny starters could take under 15. And it wasn't just egg luck. An hour later, I had my shiny Toad's Cool and followed it up with a shiny Whooper immediately after. The shiny sandwich I was using ran out at this point though, so all I could really do was just hatch the rest of my eggs. Wait, is that? Oh my gosh, what? You're kidding me. 529 eggs and I have all three of the starters? I wasn't gonna let this lot go to waste. So after hatching the rest of my eggs, it was time to start hunting the Scarlet exclusive Paradox Pokemon. By far, the easiest Paradox Pokemon to hunt is Fluttermane, due to something called the shiny Fluttermane glitch. In a nutshell, if you go to the bottom of Area Zero with a Ghost Encounter and Sparkling Sandwich during the day, the only Pokemon that can spawn is shiny Fluttermane. This is because any normal Fluttermane the game tries to spawn will instantly disappear because it's daytime, while the shiny versions have an extra flag that prevents this. I was able to find mine in a bit over five minutes, bringing me up to seven total shinies. The next Paradox Pokemon I wanted was by far my favorite, Roaring Moon. I'd use a Dragon Shiny Sandwich for it, but because this isn't an isolated encounter, I found two separate Shinies wheelless first. I finally got Roaring Moon partway into my third sandwich and decided to use the time I had left over to hunt on the Castle Royal Lake Islet. <gasps> oh my gosh. Chat, 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 shiny Goomy! Sandy Shocks was my next choice of Paradox Pokemon, and I decided it'd be best to use a ground type sandwich. This way, if I caught it, I could hunt Great Tusk immediately after. Things started off pretty slow here, and I wouldn't find my first shiny until over two hours in. Wait, it finally happened. It's a shiny Fampy. You can tell because it's slightly lighter than all of the other ones. Now, one shiny Fampy is fine. Are you kidding me? You're kidding me. I don't need another. I don't need another shiny Fampy! Is that... are you serious? Stop giving me shiny Fampies! I don't need another one! Yeah, I don't care. Faint. I don't need it. 
I don't need a third shiny Fampy. I delayed it reload my save to catch it and finally found that shiny Sandy Shocks not long after. I used the rest of my sandwich to search for shiny Great Tusk, but only managed to find a shiny Doug Trio. Not too long after though, I did get my Great Tusk and then repeated a very similar situation to Sandy Shocks by finding three shiny Metatines before shiny Slitherwing showed up. Screamtail was the next Paradox Mon and finding it shiny was pretty painless. I even managed to use leftovers from the sandwich to find my fastest shiny yet, Tinkatink, -tink, in only 90 seconds of searching. I followed that up with my last Paradox Pokemon, Brute Bonnet, which is just another quick isolated encounter shiny. With the Scarlet Paradox Pokemon caught and plenty of time left on the clock, I wanted to set my sights on a different shiny hunting method, the Outbreak method. Outbreaks make it really easy to find a ton of the same Pokemon in one spot and can even increase shiny odds if you defeat 60 Pokemon within it. The Outbreak Pokemon I wanted to hunt the most was Eevee. So I positioned myself in Medali with a normal encounter power sandwich and started re-rolling the outbreaks by changing the time on my Switch's clock. It didn't take long for a Dunsparce outbreak to appear. I know this isn't what I was looking for, but Dunsparce is unique in the sense that there is a 1 in 100 chance that when it evolves, it will be a 3 segment to Dunsparce. So I figured, why not? It'd be pretty funny if I got lucky. Unfortunately though, I didn't. That's okay, because I got a Tandem Mouse outbreak not long after, which has a similar story. 1 in 100 chance on evolution to be a family of 3. To add some extra perspective to the hunt, this is a normal Tandem Mouse, while this is shiny. Can you tell the difference? No? Here, I'll explain it in different terms. This shirt is $10. This shirt, on the other hand, is $925. If you can't tell the difference, I can't help you. Hey, that's it. You don't know how much I saw that and my brain was like, oh my god. I wasn't sure if I would see it, if I would know immediately, but I did. I've looked at so many mice. Unfortunately, not a family of three. Shortly after, I'd finally get my Eevee outbreak where I'd defeat 60 and begin my hunt for nine shiny Eevees so that I could get every single Eeveeution. Um, what color does shiny Eevee look like? It looks like this, let's go! You asked the question right at the right time. Is that an Eevee? Poggers? I'm pogging? Is that another one? Okay. Wait, no, come back, come back. <laughs> There's another one already. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Is that already number four? What? Well, I think the luck's finally. Never mind. <laughs> the luck is not balanced out. We got another one. I was about to be like, oh, it's been about ten minutes without a shiny. I think I think it's finally evening it out. It's getting like it's coming a bit fair. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. What is this luck? Another one! Number seven, baby! In under three hours, I had found 10 shiny Eevees, letting me get every single Eevee Lucian along with two extras I could keep on Evolve, landing me at 37 total shinies. I'd follow that up with the shiny Glamour Hunt before deciding to tackle one of the weirdest outbreak shiny hunts in the game, Dusk Lycanroc. When you encounter a Lycanroc outbreak, the time of day in game determines what spawns. If it's night, midnight form spawns. If it's day, midday form spawns. But if it's evening, dusk lichen rock spawns. Evening, however, only lasts for three real life minutes. This really complicates the shiny hunt, but it's still more than doable. Before doing anything, I defeated 60 lichen rocks in the outbreak to increase my odds. Next, I had to figure out what time corresponded to two minutes before dusk on my Switch's internal clock. Then I'd save the game, make a shiny rock encounter sandwich, and spend three minutes at the outbreak hunting for the shiny. Once midnight form lichen rocks start spawning, I'd close the game, set my clock back to the proper time, and repeat. Oh my god! <laughs> what? It was, uh, it only took like 10 minutes! I am shocked at how lucky I was with this shiny. This was only my second evening during the hunt, and while it definitely isn't my fastest shiny, because of how tedious the method is, I'd consider it one of my luckiest. At this point, I was in the mood to try a lazier shiny hunting method, sort of like how it's really lazy for me to just put my analytics on screen and tell you only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed, but I'm doing it anyways because for some reason it really does work. It's time for the AFK shiny hunts. The whole idea of these is you stand somewhere, a ton of a certain Pokemon will spawn in front of you, and if there's no shiny, you reset the spawns with a picnic. The first of these Pokemon I wanted to try were Larvitar and Sableye. Just stand right here in this cave and the Pokemon just leak out of the wall depending on what 
what sandwich you're using. Overall, this method was pretty solid and it only took me about 30 minutes to find Larvitar and another 25 for Sableye. The next AFK hunt I wanted to give a try was Shiny Applin. This one is even lower effort than the last because once you have a dragon shiny sandwich on, you can use let's go mode with Coridon to continually kill any Applin that spawns in this tree. What makes the strat truly AFK is that if a shiny spawns, Coridon won't kill it. So the only action needed on my part is setting everything up. After that, I kept going because I still wanted a second shiny Applin for both the evolutions. And after another hour and 40 minutes, I got my second shiny green boy. I still had some time left on that dragon encounter sandwich, and fortunately for me, there was another AFK shiny hunt for a dragon type Pokemon. If I stand by this tree just north of Valencia, a ton of Cyclozars will spawn and then immediately run off the ledge. <laughs> I love how they just should go off the cliff. It's so funny. <laughs> it's just too good. Hey! Oh, frick, I didn't save. Okay, um, for the most part, I consider these shiny hunting strategies pretty average in terms of shiny efficiency, so I only wanted to try one more Char Cadet. Like Applin, I was aiming for two shinies so I could get both evolutions. The AFK location for this shiny was on the west side of the map, and as I started to do the hunt, I was becoming less confident on whether or not I could actually tell if a shiny spawned from so far away. It also didn't help that I only found my first shiny Char Cadet after an hour and a half of hunting when I moved from the AFK spot and had one spawn somewhere weird. So those clusters of pixels I was looking at? Yeah, still no idea how they'd look on a shiny. I decided it'd be best to ditch the AFK strat and start roaming around the area looking much more closely at each spawn for blue eyes. To be completely honest, not only do I think I was getting faster spawns doing it like this, I was much more confident in my ability to say each one wasn't shiny. I continued to hunt this shiny for the next two and a half hours, slowly falling into insanity and denial on whether or not this thing actually existed. I knew I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was up. I had to have spawned thousands of char cadets at this point, so when it finally happened, I think my incoherent reaction says it all. <laughs> Turn the game! <laughs> Get up quick, please get me out of here. Oh my gosh. Next, I decided it was finally time to pursue Shiny Dino and Zorua. Both of these Pokemon disguise themselves in the overworld, so you can't tell if they're shiny at a glance. I started with Ditto, and it was pretty clear encountering every Pokemon to see if they're shiny wouldn't work. Fortunately, there's an easy solution. Pokemon in Let's Go mode won't kill shinies, so all I had to do was see if Persian would kill the disguised Pokemon. If it did, not a shiny. Around 20 minutes into the hunt, I came across a shiny meow. While it wasn't what I was looking for, it did give me an idea. What I trade my best friend, shiny hunting companion Persian, who stuck with us through good times and bad over the last 40 hours for a pink eared replacement I just met. Yes, I would. With some incredibly fortunate luck, Shiny Ditto would appear on my next sandwich, and I was ready to move on to Zorua. The Shiny Zorua hunt ends up being a bit easier because they mostly spawn disguised as Mabostiff, which is normally a pack spawn with Mastiff. This means I can immediately tell everything in front of me right now is a Zorua. <gasps> chat, chat, chat. That's it. Pog! It's the blue-haired idiot! I really wasn't feeling that bad anymore about how much the game screwed me over with Char Cadet. Two of the most tedious shiny hunts took a combined total of two hours and I felt great. I decided to be a good time to do some of the glitch shiny Pokemon. What I mean by that is Pokemon with multiple forms such as Tatsugiri are currently bugs that only its default form will spawn in outbreaks. In Tatsugiri's case, that's curly form. Even though they'll probably patch this in the future, I still wanted to do a hunt where I got the droopy or stretch form. Gosh dang it! I already have one of those! Goomy, what are you doing here? I'm worried, I feel like we're getting more Goomy spawns than Tatsugiri. Gosh dang it! This is the one we don't want! <laughs> oh, it's still a shiny, yeah, but we have to keep hunting. Oh, it happened! It happened, chat! It's another shiny Goomy! I'm not shiny hunting Goomy! I've got three! This is my third! Oh my god! That's not even on my sandwich! You're not even the right type! I feel like in general, gosh dang it, another one, no, no. 
Now, I wasn't upset I was getting all these shinies, but you'd think with a two out of three chance of getting one of the glitch forms, it wouldn't take very long to get what I wanted, but nope, shiny f***ing Altaria instead. I mean, I love this Pokemon, but my god, I just wanted the stupid white fish. Fortunately, it finally showed up not long after, and I could start hunting my next glitch, Pokemon Floette. For this Pokemon's evolution line, the outbreaks will only spawn the red flower version. The only annoying thing about this hunt was how I had to spend two hours squinting at Pokemon until I finally found the orange flowered shiny. I took a quick detour for shiny Fido and was right back on the glitch form hunt for blue striped Basculin. Out of all of the broken Pokemon, this would be the worst, giving me a 50-50 shot of getting the right form. Surely though, this wouldn't be a big problem, right? That one kind of looks it. It is, and it's the wrong color. What do you know? The one you can get in Outbreaks. Oh boy. Oh no, no, please don't tell me. Please don't tell me. Come back here, you little, you. <laughs> oh, come on, man. No. No, 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 wait, where did it go? You little. Three 50-50 rolls. No, stop getting in the way. There's one or like two I want to check here. The one underwater. Oh my gosh, why are you taking such a weird path to it? Is it shiny? Please tell me that is a shiny and that's why you're not attacking and not because of a bug. Yes! Finally! It happened! <laughs> In the six hours of hunting for blue striped shiny Basculin, I got three shiny red striped Basculin, four shiny Psyduck, a shiny Choodle, Aracuda, and Slowbro, bringing me up to 69 total shinies. 10 shinies in six hours isn't bad, but four of these are Psyduck and three are just the wrong Basculin. I don't even like Basculin and shiny Golduck is ugly. Just, I know it's unfair for me to complain, but I really feel like the game is taunting me by trying to make me lucky in ways I just don't want to be lucky. I still had one glitch hunt left to do though, so I was really hoping this wouldn't happen again. That hunt was Blaze Breed Tauros. This one is pretty interesting because for every one Blaze Breed Tauros, I have four normal Tauros spawn. But because I'm using a fire shiny sandwich, the extra Tauros have normal shiny odds. The math works out, so I'll probably find two normal shiny Tauros before one Blaze Breed Tauros. That's a normal shiny Tauros. Oh my gosh, it is gonna be impossible to reach this thing. I see it still, it hasn't despawned. It's like somewhere. Oh yeah, it's, it's in the pack. Which one is it? It's it's that one. It's the one with the black coat. It's right by me. It's about to charge. Just encounter it. Another. Interesting. But yeah, so we've gotten two shiny Tauroses in under an hour, even though their shiny odds shouldn't be increased because it's a fire encounter sandwich. All right, well, here is another normal shiny Tauros. So I put it in the re repeat ball. I think I think the repeat ball is the toxic way to catch Pokemon that I've already caught. Because who puts a shiny in a repeat ball? The repeat ball was like a mid Pokeball. Is that another shiny? Yeah, that is. Tauros number five. Gosh dang it. Oh! <laughs> Give it up for number six. Are you? You are, I hate you. Kill it, I'm not killing it. It wouldn't even be satisfying to kill it at this point. <sighs> Hello, shiny normal Taros, my old friend. It still works out to... No, that's just baiting me with the lighting, right? Wait, no, it's not. It's not baiting me. Oh my God. There it is, it's freaking real. Finally, what moves does this know? I'm not letting it kill itself. Finally, Blaze Breed Tauros, shiny Pokemon 81, save the game, oh my god. The next shinies I wanted to go for were the two female only evolutions, Salazzle and Vespaquin. Normally you'd have a one in eight chance when encountering a shiny Salandit or Combi for it to be female, but there's no way in hell I'm letting this game play with my emotions more, so I'm going to re-roll for outbreaks. It didn't take too long to get my Salazzle outbreak, and I got super lucky with a shiny that appeared before I even made my sandwich. 20 minutes later, I got my Vespaquin outbreak and started grinding. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Two? What? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> There's two. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> Don't despawn, all right? B bear with me. 
that's just back there watching. I caught both shinies and after that insane luck, I had reached a point where there weren't really many weird shiny hunts left, so I decided it was time to do the unthinkable and go for Pokemon that, well, I like. Instead of hunting a dumb blue striped fish, I got shiny Mareep for number 85. 90 and 91 were two shiny Ralts so I could get both evolutions. I did a Voltorb outbreak because I thought seeing all the Voltorb exploding would be funny, which it was. And then for shiny 95, I opted for Girafferig so I could get the new evolution. I was really quickly starting to creep up on 100 total shinies. Number 96 was Veluza, a shiny hunt that I would never recommend to anyone. 97, Oranguru, who was a Scarlet exclusive. 98 was Bisharp because I love the new evolution. 99, Palafin because because well, dolphin and a hundred, Nackly baby. I love this little dude. What a little thing. Look at him. Anyways, I would be perfectly content with just ending here because one of the original goals I set for myself was a hundred total shinies, but I still had over 30 hours left. So I kept collecting shinies like normal, getting some more favorites like Wiglet and Reller. But then I remembered something. I definitely do not recommend attempting to shiny hunt using co-op mode in the other version of the game because it's not fun. I could shiny hunt the version exclusives using my second switch in co-op mode. That's a fantastic idea. Here's the plan. I'll load into a union circle with me on Scarlet and my second switch on Pokemon Violet. We'll make a shiny sandwich together and then I'll have the Violet switch hunt a version exclusive like Iron Bundle. Once I find the shiny, I'll move the Scarlet player over to its location and catch it. This method actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. However, we were capped to around five Pokemon spawns at a time compared to the normal 15 ish you'd get in single player. I started hunting Iron Hands next, and by some wild freak of luck, right as the sandwich ended, a second shiny Iron Bundle spawned. I already have you, what the heck? Two sandwiches later, I did find Iron Hands though. I'd also get insanely lucky with Iron Thorns right after, tracking them down in only one sandwich. For the most part, the remaining four shiny Paradox mods, including Iron Moth, Iron Jugglist, Iron Treads, and Iron Valiant were pretty easy to get in co-op. I think I was mostly just getting unfairly lucky with these hunts because the next two shinies, Ice Q and Bagon, both showed up within the next hour too. Before quitting the co-op mode strats, I would catch three more shinies, including a Draclog, Passimian, and lastly, Gulpin. This wasn't every Violet version exclusive, but everything left I either didn't care about or didn't want to put up with. There is no way I'm catching into the Taros. You cannot make me. By this point, I had 120 shinies and just over 17 hours left on the clock. I decided it was time to give myself one last goal, 150 total shinies. A bit of a stretch, I know, but I'd learned so much on my journey up to this point. I just had to focus on Pokemon that were either isolated encounters or quick outbreaks. <gasps> Gold puppy! Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the wrong shiny. I've only spawned like 30 hoppips this whole time. Did I have a shiny hoppip yet? No, so it's fine. I'm just surprised we got a hoppip before a small of. There we go. We still have 50 seconds. Oh my God. It was right there all along. Two and two minutes. Yeah, we had just enough time to get the shinies we needed. Oh, that scared me. Oh my gosh. Magneton, not a Magnemite, but I will take it. Little guy! I love him! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. I knew this might happen. Hey, you're so happy, aren't you? Wait, is that a pink flower in the background? Like, no joke? You see that? Oh my gosh. It's not unreasonable to think I will have... 150. Five shinies, two and a half hours. Pretty reasonable. Oh my god. See, this is why we make the sandwich first, chat. There's two? And we haven't even gotten to the outbreak? What? Chat, there it is. It didn't despawn. It didn't despawn. It might go too far away, though. We won't save until I catch both. I'll be honest, chat. If this was my last shiny, I don't think I'd be upset. Here it is. Chat, there was another one that was to the left that spawned, despawned that I thought might have been shiny. Anyone want to check the VOD? Because it'd be funny if it was. Easy. Chat, that top left. I think that's a shiny. It looks like one because its feet aren't orange. <laughs> that's funny because it's it spawned in, immediately despawned, and I found a shiny anyways. It's kind of unfortunate. I'm like hoping for this climactic ending. Like we have 11 minutes left and I'm hoping for this like crazy climactic ending, but I just don't think that's gonna happen. Pretty decent chance. Bombardier was genuinely our last shiny, which I mean, I did say I wouldn't mind if it was my last shiny. There's like no time left. 
Come on, it has to spawn like now. Please. 30 seconds, that's still enough time. No. No. Three, two, one. No. Yay, how could you? After 100 hours of shiny hunting, I had captured 154 shinies. This includes a few dupes, but after all was tallied up and I evolved my Pokemon, I had 222 total entries towards a shiny Pokedex. If there's anything to take away from this, it's that shiny hunting in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is absolutely ridiculous. I got on average over one and a half shinies per hour and got to get countless of my favorite shinies, along with way too many freaking Tauros. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my journey, and before you go, I'm going to be giving away any duplicate shinies I got during the 100 hours. I'll be trading them away using the link code shown on screen now, Tuesday, January 17th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know how long it'll take, but I'll be trading on that code up until I run out of dupes. Please subscribe, and thanks again.